let Jesus fill. Let Jesus fill. Let Jesus fill.
worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Amen. You're worthy, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. There was no man found worthy. Amen. Only Christ. Amen. Amen. And we do just have a few announcements. Uh, Tonight after service, we will have some snacks and refreshments over up there for those who want to attend. And also tomorrow after service, we'll have a carry-in of plenty of food. So everyone, amen, whoever wants to come, more than welcome. Amen. I may say up the number of hands you have a need before the Lord this evening. Let's guess Brother Benson if he can lead us in a word of prayer. Also the tithes and the offerings. thank you this evening, Lord. Oh, Lord, our heart bubbles over, Lord, for the love that you have shed in our soul. God, for the knowing of your grace and mercy, Lord, knowing your power and your love. Father, we just come this evening, Lord, to worship you, Lord Jesus, to pour out, Lord, our hearts to you, to ask that, Father, you would direct us, guide us, lead us, Lord Jesus many, Lord, that's come here tonight, Lord, with loved ones upon our hearts, Lord, call, holding them before you, Lord, that you will get a hold of each and every heart. Do what needs to be done, Lord, that their eyes may be opened, Lord, and their hearts may be turned to you. We pray also for Brother Austin's request as well, Lord, for this one of their family and friends. Dear God, we just commit everything to your hands, Lord. You are mindful of all our heart's desire. And Lord, you said, Lord, you would give us the heart, our heart's desire, Lord. If, Lord, we would just love you with all that we have within us, Lord. Help us, Lord, not just tonight, Lord, but each and every day going forward, Lord, to give all our heart, mind, strength, and love, and not just consideration, but our whole being over to you, Lord. Pour out your spirit in our souls, Lord, dear God, and cause us, Lord, to be epistles written, read of all men, Lord, and that we just commit ourselves to you, Lord. Move each and every one of us out of our own way, not just tonight, Lord, but each and every night, Lord. Those that couldn't be here tonight, Lord, we pray that you'd be with them as well. Pour out your spirit upon their hearts. And cause their thoughts and minds to be continually upon you, Lord. Bless the tithes and the offering, Lord. Be with each and every one tonight, Lord. Move our brother aside. Move us aside, Lord. We've not come, Lord, Lord, with confidence in any man or preacher. We've come, Lord, as you said, Lord, whether two or three would be gathered in your name, you would be in our midst, Lord. We hold to that promise, Lord, and we know that, Father, you will make it alive. We just commit all things to your hands now, Lord. Bless everything and all the efforts that's put forth, Lord. Bless our fellowship. Be with those that need to travel back home this evening and be with those that's traveling to and fro, Lord. We pray also not just for us here, Lord, but for your bride around the globe, Lord. Many that are going through different things and persecutions, Lord. Strengthen, Lord. Show yourself King of kings and Lord of lords, exalted above all. We just commit all things to your hands. In Jesus Christ's name we ask. song I came out to give God the glory, amen, how many come tonight to give him the glory, lift him up, amen, why don't you greet your neighbor as we sing that, I came out to give God the glory, well I came out to give God the glory, all the glory, all the glory, I came out to give God the glory. Came 
Sing that song, Don't It Make You Want to Go Home, amen. How many can say that with all your heart? Everything you see every day, don't it make you want to go home, amen. I've been watching, waiting for the coming of the Lord. Promise he said, like it was before. God's carrying his people with a powerful hand. Take us to the promised land. children get 
Message have done to you is make you say, Oh, I want to go see Jesus. <laughs> uh, God be praised. You may be seated just for a moment here. Uh, when you hear that song, it's like uh, 20 years ago, Brother Taylor, his voice pops in your head. <laughs> uh, one that we heard sing that, and uh, what, a, what a powerful uh, song that is. Uh, it's good to see everyone tonight. You know, greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it's good to see uh, we've got several visitors uh, come. Wesley, amen. It's good to see Brother Vincent tonight, Brother Mike, God bless y'all, and uh, it's it's good that we be here, there are some very beautiful Smith girls down there, I sure like seeing them, maybe, maybe the Lord will, he could, they could sing a nice song for us tomorrow, uh, but uh, didn't mean to put them on the spot, got a lot of raised eyebrows, but uh, you know, you go down south, they say, uh, Brother Dan, get up here and sing me a song, <laughs> but like, so we just uh, appreciate the, the love of the Lord, his uh, grace unto us, and uh, the hour that we're living in. Uh, Brother Jesse is uh, no stranger here. He's actually um, probably one of the main reasons, if not the main reason, this church is even here. Um, so I, I always carry a, a, great, uh, a great reverence uh, for the ministry that, that God he allowed us to sit under there as a pastor for a few years, and it was just a, a very... Uh, very powerful time uh, in my life and some of you others that were also there is just a, a real powerful time and uh, every time the Lord has allowed our brother to come we've we've watched the Lord do uh, wonderful things and and uh, just the sowing of the word amen is it, is it so nice to to know and uh, that this message it just continues to unfold it just keeps on opening it and uh, uh, it, it, you just can't exhaust uh, the word of God it is the inexhaustible fountain isn't it amen and uh, that's the blessings of where God has placed us here. Uh, we're getting ready for a latter rain. We're getting ready to get moved out of here. And, uh, you know, the Lord has been very faithful to us. So uh, we appreciate his grace there. And uh, we want to give our brother ample time to speak. And uh, how many believe, uh, how many come with a need tonight? I believe the Lord can meet that. Uh, 
I'm right with you. Um, you know, it's it's true. We were working with the other day. Uh, there's a there's a bar here. There's a bar here, and there's a bar here. Uh, so there's plenty of atmosphere they can push off. But you know what? The atmosphere of the Holy Ghost will push that down any time. Amen. Uh, remember, even as our prophet said, we understand that what that when the light shines forth, it dispels darkness. <laughs> Uh, so uh, as we have brought uh, that atmosphere of the Holy Spirit tonight, amen, uh, let us be an expectation for our Lord to do wonderful things. And uh, like I said, I, uh, you know, Brother Jesse is just uh, that's a precious brother to me. It's like, uh, uh, you know, you, you kind of give him a little wreath or, you know, you give him, give him some real nice things. Uh, you really appreciate uh, his labor of love that he's, uh, he's always searching things out and uh, just very detailed. And, and that's what we love about our brother, has a real love for the Lord, a very consecrated life. And uh, you know, those things speak volumes, don't they? Amen. So we appreciate the Lord allowing us to have him this evening. And uh, we want to get right to the word. And uh, hasn't the worship been wonderful? Amen. Amen. And uh, we appreciate the Lord for that. Uh, so let's uh, let's sing a song as we invite our brother out tonight. Uh, let's sing that song, He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. Amen. He is here, hallelujah, he is here, amen, he is here, holy, holy, I will bless his name. here as we approach the word of God here tonight. Lord, it's so true, Jesus, when you come on the scene, Lord God, our lives can never be the same, Lord God. I believe each one of us could probably look back at our lives and from a young age recognize God did something here. God saved me here. God spoke to me here. God spared me there. And Lord, as we've gone through years now and decades and all these wonderful years serving you, Lord God. We can see how present you are in our daily life, dear God. We want to thank you for that, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we want to listen closely to the word of God here tonight, Lord God. Me included, Lord God. Please don't leave me out. Let me not be a prideful person, God. Let me not be a Pharisee or a Sadducee. 
Let me be a true worshiper here tonight, Lord God. Let me hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, how I can be a better father, husband, pastor, teacher, friend, how I can be a better Christian, dear God. How people could look at my life and say, I see Jesus in that life. God, hide my sins, Lord God. Hide my sins from the people. And Lord God, I know you'll forgive them, Lord, and then you throw them in the sea of forgetfulness, Lord God. I'm so grateful for the blood of Jesus Christ here tonight, Lord God. This is a holy time, your prophet says. We know the nominal world calls it Holy Week. We know every week is holy. But Lord, this was a special time, your prophet called it the greatest time of the year where earth got its greatest message that Jesus Christ is alive. Thank you, God, that you're alive in our hearts, your lives in the, the churches, Lord God, gifts in our lives, Lord God. You're alive and well, Lord God. We want to thank you for your love and your tender compassion and your mercy. I thank you for this church, Lord. You bless all the congregation, the leaders, Lord God. Brother Cam, Sister Julia, Lord. Brother Simon, my dear family members in the natural and the spiritual, Lord God. Pray you bless the church for the glory of God. Hallelujah. How I love coming back here, Lord God. How it just thrills my, my soul, my heart, dear God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all the souls, Lord God, that are being fed the word of God. Hallelujah. And Lord Jesus, we just ask for another, uh, another outpouring of thy Holy Spirit. As your prophet told us, always stay where the Spirit of God is pouring out. Oh, God, thank you, Lord, that we can come to services and experience the reign of the Holy Spirit, the pouring out of your Spirit, Lord God. Let your Spirit be poured out here tonight and tomorrow, Lord. And, of course, every service Wednesday when, Lord, I move on and, Lord God, and then into next weekend, Lord, should you tarry, Lord, into next month, should you tarry. Lord God, we just want to continue pouring out of your blessings, Lord God, wherever we are, Lord God. Hallelujah. So we ask for your great leadership here tonight. Lord, just take control of the service. We're not going to worry about time or anything. We're just going to worry about the word of God and not worry, but just enjoy the word of God. We're going to be concerned about one thing, the will of God. So Lord Jesus, let me be a faithful servant. Do my part. I know the people will do their part as well. So bless us now in thy presence, in Jesus Christ's name. And the saints said, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Let's take our Bibles here tonight by God's grace. As I said, it's always a joy to be here. I want to appreciate Brother Cam for the invitation. By God's grace, good to be back with them. And Cam and Julie are such gracious hosts all the time. So I always, I always feel like more than a brother, right? I always feel I'm his brother, but I'm more than his brother. Because <laughs> he treats me so good by God's grace. And uh, so we're thankful again for the invitation, brother, and good to be with the saints here uh, by God's grace. Hallelujah. Good to see Sister Wendy. Hallelujah. God bless you. Anybody else I'm missing that I normally don't see by God's grace? All right. I was looking for maybe like Adam or something like that. <laughs> you know, by God's grace. <laughs> Let's go to Genesis chapter 12. Uh, we'll start here by God's grace. I'm going to preach a message. I preached at home, and I preached it at Brother Brooks's last summer, and um, he said it was amazing, and I don't count that to myself, of course. I count that to the Holy Ghost. And, if anything is revealed to me, it had nothing to do with me. If anything good comes out of me, or you, or anyone, it's Christ. Hallelujah. As people say, you know, they'll say online, they'll say, well, I appreciate this, and God bless you, and thank you for what you do. I say, well, if anything good comes out of my humble, little, insignificant life, it was I finally yielded to Christ and let Christ speak through me. Because I'm nothing. Jesus said in John 15, 5, that's my life verse, apart from me, you can do nothing. So of myself, of ourselves, we can do nothing. If anything good happens in our lives, it was Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. Brother Mike, love you, sir. Good to see you. That's a nice mustache. You guys all got the beards and mustaches going. Huh? You all look great, by God's grace. Love you all. Appreciate you. Brother Vince, good to see you, sir. Uh, I could name everybody here. So I love you all. God bless you. Brother Derek, you're sure getting tall, buddy. I told you, man. You're sure getting tall, man. Noah, uh, love you all. I'll just go around the church later, okay? <laughs> Genesis 12, verse 1. Hallelujah. You're good to be in the house of the Lord here tonight. You know, there's nowhere else I'd rather be than in God's house. Praise God. The greatest privilege of our lives is to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If I had a title tonight, I'd like to uh, just speak generally on this, Walking in the Steps of Abraham. I'd just like to preach on that. It's a, a combination of, you know, I think I'm up to, what is it, 20 years now preaching? I think I started in 2004. Uh, so this is, you know, 
like I've heard preachers say, you know, you get a little bit one year, a couple of years later, getting a little bit. And this is like a culmination of years and years and years of studying and preaching. Kind of finally all came together and I felt like this would be a help to you by God's grace. It's meant to be an encouraging message. Hallelujah. But if God starts discerning, then you know who that is. Praise God. That's the Holy Ghost. Right. Praise God. Hallelujah. If God starts rebuking, well, that just shows he loves you. Is that right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus said, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. And I'm open for that, too. You know, we had Brother McBride a few months ago. It was phenomenal. The Holy Ghost moved in a great way. I think, you know, we talked about that with some of you, and I think Cam and I were talking about that. And I have been on victory, another level of victory, since he came. I was in a season of trials and just going through mind battles. And, man, I was really struggling. And when he come, it's like, boom. The Holy Ghost just gave me this word about secret sins and everything. And since then, I've been victorious by God's grace. Hallelujah. It was a, just a special moment. And I told him, I said, brother, you're on fire right now. I said, whatever you do, keep burning for the gospel. And he probably told you some of his testimony. He struggled with fasting for years. He said he finally broke through. I said, that's a man. I said, this man's on fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what we need, a man on fire. <laughs> I mean, we all, all the preachers want to be that. I mean, uh, you, just get, you understand what I'm saying, <laughs> by God's grace. So I could talk to you all night. Well, I might as well preach by God's grace. Uh, 12, verse 1. Genesis 12, verse 1. I'm in the, okay, the wrong place here. Let me. And I forgot my Bible, so Brother Cam, I borrowed yours. I forgot mine's out in the van. I always forget something when I go. That one year I forgot my suit, and Brother uh, Dave brought me a suit. I said, thank you, Brother Dave. You know, this guy, these saints here are such wonderful saints, by God's grace. Now, I want you to picture this uh, in, in its context, okay? God is going to talk to Abraham, but I want you to picture he's surrounded by idols, we just think, oh, he's over there in Canaan already. No. When God speaks to him, he's surrounded by idols. The Bible said he was an idol worshiper with his father. You know, the, the sons always followed the fathers. Right? So he's, for 75 years, he's been idols, idols, idols. And all of a sudden he gets, thus saith the Lord. I tell you, that would make you act different, wouldn't it? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It'd make a change to your life. Yeah. How many heard, thus saith the Lord? <laughs> I heard, thus saith the Bible. Amen. Then I heard a prophet say, thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank God. Amen. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will shew thee. And I'll make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I'll bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. I want to make sure I get to verse 4. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haran. Genesis 4, verse 12. You guys do a good job on the computer, so appreciate that. Maybe I don't got to turn there. See how fast this brother is. Yeah, brother. Is that brother Dustin? Amen. God bless you, sir. And I'm sorry, I meant Romans 4.12. I'm sorry, brother, my fault. I said that wrong. Romans 4.12, my fault. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith. We're walking in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. Praise God. So I want to speak on walking in the steps of Abraham. Um, Brother Austin said this message, this series kind of changed his life as well. And bro, yeah, Brother Cam, Austin said your message on the law of restoration changed his life as well. Praise God. Remember you preached that last time back in, is that November? Um, so I want to look here at this life of Abraham, and I have a, have a visual. I don't know if they can get it up now, whenever they can get it up, but I went and did a timeline looking at the life of Abraham by God's grace. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm sorry. It's probably not going to be that, that helpful, you know, with uh, 
I don't know if that can be adjusted or not, so I do apologize on that, but um, I'll try to explain it as we go on by God's grace. And I want to say, Brother Wesley, God bless you, sir. That's right. That's right. You're, yes, hallelujah. <laughs> Just got to make sure the guests and visitors get recognized here. Uh, now, Brother Branham said in 1965, does God change his mind? Now, in Abraham's journey, he met God all along in different forms. That, that's a great lesson to learn as a Christian. God is not always going to speak to you in the same exact way. But it's still going to be, thus saith the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. This was phenomenal to me. I'm like, what? Hallelujah. All along the journey, he saw God in all kinds of different forms. And so forth, which we could, we could take it and show it. Just we are Abraham's seed if we're in Christ. Hallelujah. If, that's a big if, right? Hallelujah. And Isaac was really his lesser son, his son sexually, but spiritually Christ was Abraham's seed. His royal seed is faith. Now we find that his royal seed is, travels the same journey, that's bride of Christ, travels the same journey that Abraham did. So Abraham would see God in this form, and then that form, and then this form, this form. In other words, he had to be constantly looking for God, because he'd come in different forms. Didn't always come the same way. Right? But then the bride of Christ, the New Testament church, walks in the same steps. Travels the same journey. Now you'll see a little bit to my uh, thinking as we go along on this chart. And again, I'm sorry, it's blurry, that's my fault. He said, the last sign that Abraham seen before the promised son, pr promise, promised son came was when God was manifested in a human body and the two angels came down. Amen. Hallelujah. The last sign. Remember, uh, and I put this in my 2021 book, six times Brother Ram says, thus saith the Lord, my ministry is the last sign to the Gentiles before the rapture. Amen. And he pulls it out of Genesis 18. Right, which we'll get to in a little bit, Genesis 18. He said, it's, thus saith the Lord, the last sign. He said, if anything rises greater than this ministry, he said, you can call me a false prophet. Amen. Now, it's crazy. People rise up even today. Even in Ohio, there's a false prophet on the Internet that says, I've got the double portion of Brother Branham. Impossible. If you have a double portion, according to the Bible, you do twice as many miracles. Amen. Elijah did eight miracles, so Elisha did 16. So if you say you got a double portion of Brother Branham, you got a lot of prayer lines to do, my friend. you got a lot of squirrels to speak into existence. Just the insanity of such a statement. When we've got, thus saith the Lord, we've already got the last sign. Hallelujah. <laughs> we don't have to look for anything else, you know, any other uh, great sign to rise up. Hallelujah. Right? We're not looking for any other great sign. Now, we, we know there will be some events, right? But he's talking about a sign to the Gentiles. Amen. Amen. That's because the Jews and the Samaritans already saw the Son of Man ministry. Amen. Amen. And the Gentiles never got a chance on it. Amen. So God had to send it again. Hallelujah. He had to send it, and this time not in the form of, uh, of God in flesh in the fullness, because Brother Ram said Jesus was the Word. Amen. Brother Ram said, I'm not the Word. Right? I got the quote. But the man said, Jesus was the word. Amen. He said, all the rest of us, we're a part of the word, but we're not the fullness of the word. Only Christ was the fullness of the word. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we walk in the same journey that Abraham walked. Hallelujah. And I want to uh, look at a few more things here uh, just for your sake, uh, you know, we live in an hour where there's a lot of things said. I'm talking about outside of here, you know, in message ranks. I listen to all the, the, the popular churches because I want to know what they're preaching, right? Uh, they listen to mine, too. I found out this week. Some of them listen to mine, too. So I'm watching you. You're watching me. <laughs> That's just the way it should be. Hallelujah. <laughs> Gee, Brother Abraham said, now, if he's our absolute, there can be no other absolute. You can't have say, well, my church is my absolute, my creed is my absolute. If Christ is your absolute, you believe Christ's word. 
There's no other way to do it, Brother Ham says. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just want you to see that there's no other absolute than Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. People today, they make the tapes the absolute, and they're not. The tapes point us to the absolute. Because on the tapes, Brother Ram says, I pray, Lord, that you'll become the absolute, that everyone will be filled with the Holy Ghost, and you'll become the absolute to the entire congregation. Amen. Amen. Glory. Amen. Now, just so you know, again, this absolute comes in many different forms. Just like God changes form with Abraham. That's why you hear Brother Ram say that pillar of fire is the absolute. Well, that's right. That's a form. Then Brother Ram will say the Bible is the absolute. That's another form. Brother Ram will say Jesus Christ is the absolute. <laughs> Amen. Brother Ram will say uh, the, the, the spoken word with thus saith the Lord. That's the absolute. It is. So it's one God, right? But he, he has numerous forms, and in any form that he's in, he's the absolute. Amen. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to uh, reiterate that there can be no other. Jesus Christ is the absolute. Amen. The word of God is my absolute. Amen. I appreciate men. I appreciate preachers. I appreciate brothers and sisters. But I only got one absolute, that's Jesus Christ. Amen. Brother Ram said, you know, in uh, questions and answers, 60, 63, December 23rd, he said, you kind of look to me to your absolute. But he said, what you mean is you're following me as I follow Christ. That doesn't mean Brother Ram is the absolute. Amen. Now, when Brother Ram would say, thus saith the Lord, that's part of the absolute. Amen. Everybody follow me? But even Paul himself, Paul himself was not the absolute. The word that he got from God, that was the absolute. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So it takes a great balance, you know, uh, of revelation. Because the enemy's trying to get us to exalt ourselves. I believe that's the one sin, in, you know, that, that fights message people in America the most is the pride of life. Amen. I mean, you could argue and say, well, not argue, but you could kindly differ. I don't like the word argue. But you could say maybe lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. But I'm talking about real Holy Ghost-filled saints. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Like a real Holy Ghost-filled saint is not going to go commit adultery. Amen. Right? Or go to a prostitute or something like that or, or some, uh, 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 some porn show or something like that. A real Holy Ghost-filled saint, Brother Ram said, my comforter will keep me from doing that. <laughs> That's why I got a greater power than what David had. Amen. <laughs> That's the whole point of the New Testament is greater power. Hallelujah. So the one that's going to impact us is pride. Like Brother Ram said, he said, I'm, I'm, he said, I'm haunted by a critical spirit. He said, pray for me, I've got a critical spirit. And then later on in 1963, what does he say? In Standing in the Gap, he said, I was about ready to move up to the Colorado mountains and just stomp down here with thus saith the Lord whenever God had a thus saith the Lord, and then I'll stomp back up. He said, because every time I went and preached, there's more women with short hair and makeup on. And the men, the more, more men smoking and chewing and telling dirty jokes, he said, I lost the feeling of the people. But the angel stopped him and said, if you do that, your wife will leave you. He said, I thought I was a prophet. He said, you're an apostolic prophet. Amen. <laughs> you're not an Old Testament style prophet. You're an apostolic prophet. He said, with many gifts. Hallelujah. And take that to the New Testament. Paul was an apostolic prophet, and he did not stay away from the churches. He went with the churches. Hallelujah. He, he made sure elders were ordained in the churches. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. He visited. The Bible said he'd go in circuits, you know, and he'd visit the saints again. How you doing? Oh, I just want to encourage you today. I'll only be here for a short while. I might preach all night. If somebody falls out the window, we'll pray for them. Hallelujah. You know, he just visited them for a short time, and he'd move on, and they'd cry, and they'd weep. You know, like Ephesians, he'd weep on their neck, and I'll be, Lord willing, I'll be back. You know, I long to see you, unless Satan hinders my trip, you know. Right, <laughs> a prophet. Amen. He didn't stay away from them. He stayed with them. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we want to make, make sure we state that. Now, I want to get here eventually to Abraham. Joshua 24, verse 2. I think it was Brother Troy Swady that preached this when I first caught the revelation this years ago. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus saith the Lord of God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nacor. And they served 
other gods. So now we see where was Abraham beforehand. Hallelujah. Let me get my picture up there. Abraham was in Ur. He was an idolater in Ur. Is that right? My. Doesn't that encourage you? God can take an idolater of 75 years and make something out of him. Mm. Glory. I feel good about that, Brother Mike. Amen. I was only in idolatry for about, uh, I'd say maybe 19 years. You know. Hallelujah. Praise God. 75 years. And he would have followed his dad, so maybe his dad was carving out idols. And he's right there, right next to his dad, teaching, oh, teach me how to sell these idols and carve out idols. And maybe, maybe or not, but one thing for sure, he'd go down to the temple and he'd bow down to the idols. And after a while, he's like, Dad, do we have to do this? Of course, son. Abram, do what you told you to do. Come on. 75 years bowing down and the idols don't talk back. That's important. Hallelujah. Your previous life of sin, there might have been pleasures in it, but there was no real heavenly reality in it. You could have pleasure for a season, but after a while you saw it was empty. You saw the fruit of it was only death. Imagine one day his dad said, we're going down to worship. And he bows down and all of a sudden he hears a voice say, stand up on thy feet. And dad's like, get down. And maybe he's pulled off. And he hears, I'm going to make a great nation of you. I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to bless you. And all of a sudden, this ain't coming from an idol. This is coming from heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. This is way different than the idols that I was raised around. Oh, this message is way different than the Assembly of God Pentecostal Church I was raised in. Although I thank God for their kindness, you know. (laughs) This is different. We've got thus saith the Lord, hallelujah, on multiple levels, hallelujah, from a prophet, from the scripture, from our own experiences. God has spoken to some of us, and it's thus saith the Lord, hallelujah. If it was spoken and it came to pass, that's thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Think of it. If you had a dream and you told it beforehand and it came to pass, that's thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so Abram, here's the voice of God. He says, get thee away from your idols. And look at him. Look at Abram. He obeys. And in 75 75 years of idolatry can be done away with in the matter of one moment. As soon as he decided in his heart, amen, as soon as that face struck his heart, hallelujah, he knew in his heart, I'm going to leave this. I'm going to get a new life. God has called me to start a new life. Hallelujah. As soon as he believed that, the Bible said God called him righteous. Oh, my Hallelujah. And 75 years of sin and shame and idolatry and wasting years is totally wiped away. And God promises that you're going to be blessed. And every family on earth, even the Smith family in Liberty Center, Ohio, is going to be blessed because of you, Abraham. <laughs> now you can put your family in there too. Hallelujah. I got to make it personal for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And so... What happens is he was called around 1920 B.C. in Genesis uh, 12, but he doesn't even get the circumcision until about 1911, about nine years later. So we'll get to that. You know, that's Genesis 12 and then 17. Oh, that looks a lot better. Good job, brothers. Boy, you guys really know what you're doing. Hallelujah. I could learn a, two, I could learn a few things from you guys. Hallelujah. Now, I want to look at the scripture here. Romans 4, 11. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had, yet being uncircumcised 
that he might be the father of all them that believe, though he be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Now we read verse 12, right, in our uh, text. Hallelujah. And I want to read 12 again. The father of circumcision to them which, who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. So we get two things in these verses. He had faith before he had the token. And he was righteous before he had the token. That ought to make somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Maybe we're not at the shouting point yet. Hallelujah. (laughs) Amen. Hallelujah. Before Abraham got the seal of the token of the covenant, even before he was sealed into the covenant, God already said, you're righteous. Hallelujah. Righteous means you are right. Hallelujah. It means you do what's right. Abraham already had that. Hallelujah. As soon as he obeyed that voice, as soon as he started packing his bags, come on, Sarai, come on, let's pack up. We got a trip to make. God's called me. Hallelujah. Amen. As soon as he did that, he was already righteous. Hallelujah. Amen. So, see, church, that's why we know people outside the message can be saved. You'd be surprised what preachers say they can't. I was surprised by the number of preachers that say you can't be saved outside the message. That's nonsense. If that's the case, how, how were they saved in Ephesus in Acts 19? Or in 18, they were already saved. Apollos had already taught them the word of God. And as soon as Paul shows up, they get the Holy Ghost right away. Right. They were already justified and sanctified. Right. Now, I believe it's true. To get the Holy Ghost, you've got to have a message preacher preach it to you. But I also want to leave room in case I'm wrong. Because Jesus is appearing to many Muslims right now. Yeah. I met one right. in Guyana. I don't, Cam, I think, you might, I, don't, you, I think you might have met him. I don't know for sure. But he was the one that when we'd preach, he'd say, that's solid, brother. I was old. He's, he, he really liked our preaching. He'd say, that's solid, solid, solid. I'll never forget that guy. <laughs> he was a Muslim, though, and he was uh, drunk watching TV, dirty movies. And he said, all of a sudden, he turned. He felt a presence come in the room, and Jesus Christ was standing right there. He said, instantly, he fell on his face. And all of his drunkenness left him. And he bowed down and wept his way to salvation. And Brother Cam, he went searching for the first church. He found Brother Maxwell Lee. <laughs> A message church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So see, if God can't get a preacher in there, you can't keep God out. Who's going to keep the mighty one of Israel, the holy one of Israel? Who's going to keep the king of kings outside of his creation? Amen. He proved it on the day of resurrection. No Roman seal. There's no seal that can keep him out. He breaks every seal. He breaks every chain. He's a chain breaker, a promise keeper, light in the darkness. He's God. Amen. He already had righteousness before he even had the seal. Hallelujah. Things we have to to recognize and understand by God's grace. That's why there's such a thing as a foolish virgin. She's foolish. She she should have prepared the oil, but she's still virgin. Right? Still virgin. Hallelujah. And, And remember, even that, this is amazing. Even 2 Corinthians 11, verse 2, even that verse says, I, pr- I want to present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Amen. And that church sure don't look like spiritual virgins, do they? Right. <laughs> right? right? So, Brother Cam, sometimes I looked at that church, I said, my, we are a real book of Acts church, because look at us compared to that. <laughs> you know, some of their short- shortcomings and right. the brother sleeping with his stepmother and taking, I mean, I, I'm not taking anybody to court. I'm not saying, brother, amen, I'm taking you to court. Give me my $10 back. That was a church. Started in the book of Acts. So I, so I can see God is restoring, just like he said. I will restore, saith the Lord, all the years, amen, that the cankerworm, the palmworm, the locust, the caterpillar, I'll restore. And church, we can see God is restoring. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. He's restoring. Hallelujah. 
We're waiting for that great big outpouring, but we sure enjoy what we got right now by God's grace. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're waiting for that latter rain, praise God. Or we're thankful for the measure that we have now. Cam shared that good quote with us there. <laughs> Well, we're getting a small measure. Boy, if this is a small measure, what is the great measure going to be like? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. What is this great measure going to be like? What is this ladder rain going to be like? I don't know, but all I know is I want to be there when it falls. Amen. <laughs> oh, glory. Now, the Bible says plainly of uh, Galatians 3, 26 and 29, that ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. And then 29, if you be Christ, you're Abraham's seed. So each one of you are Abraham's seed. If you have faith in Jesus Christ. How many got faith in Jesus Christ? All right, as soon as you got that faith, now God calls you righteous. And I don't know if I preach this here or not, Brother Cam, but I preach a sermon called Perfect in heaven, Im imperfect on earth. So opposites. As soon as you're saved, now I'm talking about as soon as you're saved, but in God's mind, he always knew you were righteous, right? But I'm talking about, I'm talking about nobody can accuse you in heaven as soon as you get saved. Like the, he can try, but you'll always be forgiven. And Job's the example. In heaven, Job was perfect. So much that God said, I want to have a testimony meeting tonight. Devil, where you been going? Oh, so-and-so. Have you considered Job? He's perfect. He eschews evil. Mm. <laughs> what a testimony meeting. Huh? Wouldn't you like God to say that about you? Amen. Have you considered my servants, Derek's? <laughs> my two servants, Derek, hallelujah. <laughs> They're perfect, amen. amen. Now, we know Job wasn't. I got a whole list of sins that he did. But in heaven, he was perfect. God was bragging on him because God saw the sacrifice. God saw the blood. God saw the finished product. And let me say this, God saw his theophany there too. <laughs> yes, hallelujah. The Bible said there are angels, their faces, their theophanies, Brother Abraham said, from 2 Corinthians 5, always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So in heaven, you're perfect. But then, church, during his trials, he went through months of suffering. He lost his family, his money. I calculated it one time, it was $5 million. Now, that was before all this inflation. So now it's probably like 50. <laughs> if it was 5 million back then, about 10 years ago when I preached this, it, it probably like 50 million now. Okay? I used to buy eggs, just so you know. I used to buy eggs for 27 cents at Aldi in 2019. Now they're 250. Now, you, how many hundreds of, just, okay, side note, right? But Job lost everything. Job lost everything. And it got so bad. Now, Job got under such difficulty with the loss of his health that he said, where's God? I want to come talk. I want God to come talk to me. I've been righteous. So who did God send? Elahu. And Elahu bawled him out. But Ram said, Elahu was a type of Christ. <laughs> Elihu spent, was it, three chapters rebuking Job. Who are you? You can't say this. You're, you're not so right. You're not more righteous than God. And then finally God comes down. God's like, now God before in heaven said, he, have you considered Job? Have considered him a Job? Here's my boy Job. He's no, nobody like Job. But when God comes down to earth, the first thing he says, who is this that darkeneth knowledge? <laughs> He didn't say, hi, Job, how you doing, friend? Huh? Oh, so God treats us differently in heaven than earth? Yes. Because while you're on earth, you're in this awful pest house. And as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Hallelujah. That was God's love to Job. Amen. Hallelujah. So church, when God forgave your sins, you've already got a theophany. Now, God already had a pre-plan. But, you know, you, we, you and I recognize the moment when I repented, I, I was righteous in heaven. Hallelujah. I've got a theophany body. Hallelujah. I've got eternal life. I've already passed from death unto life. Hallelujah. But then I'm going to go through trials here on earth, 
And God sometimes is going to come down and rebuke me to my face. Usually it's through a preacher like Simon or Cam, you know. <laughs> or Brother Diggs, you know. We had, we had Brother Diggs was out there last weekend. <laughs> Brother McBride. <laughs> the very God you love will come down and rebuke you because he loves you. And God said, who is this that darkened the council? That dark, darkened the council. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? He continued to ask him 65 more questions. There were 66 questions. And God never, God never gave him any answers to what he wanted to know. But God said, I have the scripture. God said, why do you call yourself more righteous than me? That's what, so Job's whole, whole complaint was, I'm being mistreated. I don't deserve this. And I'm more, God is wrong. I'm right. Now look what he did, church. It struck me. I've been preaching on the goat preachers. They call themselves the greatest of all time. But I didn't realize that's exactly what Job did. And Job didn't say I was the goat of all the preachers. He said, I'm greater than God. And the church said, is that the Bible? Anybody been reading the Bible lately? I, mean, I used to be really upset at the goat preachers, but now I can see, well, they could be saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I'll tell you this, if they keep that attitude, God is going to spank them. Because that's what God did to Job. God spanked him so hard. But he said, I repent in dust and ashes. He ripped his clothes. He got the ashes and he laid there. He said, I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because he exalted himself above God. Amen. In other words, God will not let you play around too long with that pride of life. Because he that exalts himself shall be abased. Amen. I've been watching those preachers. People they love die. And, and what I mean is they, they love them, but they say they're going to be healed, but they don't get healed. And I found this church. They call themselves the greatest, but they don't even have the first step on divine healing. They just pronounce everybody's going to be healed. Everybody's going to be healed. God always wants to heal you. God doesn't always want to heal you. Uh, what scripture says God's always going to heal? How about, how about Paul with his, blind eye, with his eye trouble? Did God heal him? No. How about Timothy's often stomach ache? And so what does Brother Bram tell us in works as faith expressed? He said the first thing to do is find the revelation of God's will. He said you can have 50 gallons of oil poured on your head. That's a lot of oil. He said you can have everybody pray for you. He said that's fine. That will encourage you. But until God drops the revelation in your heart that you're going to be made well, it's not going to happen. And Brother Bram said it's not by your works. It's by grace. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the highlight sermon on divine healing if you want to go listen to it. Hallelujah. Amen. November 65. Amazing. And I'm like, my, these people call themselves the goats. They don't even have the first step right on a minor. They're majoring on a minor. And that confuses some people. Well, you said they're going to be made well, but they died. It's a pretty serious accusation. But see, what is pride? That's what pride does. Pride says, I know God's will for this situation. And then they're wrong. You've exalted yourself above God. Now, I'm not immune to mistakes. I make mistakes too. I'm just realizing this by revelation. Job just, he didn't say, well, I'm just the greatest preacher. He said, I'm greater than God. No. Let's be humble. Hallelujah. That's, that's all I can say. <laughs> let's be humble. Praise God. If we're wrong, let's say I'm wrong. Lord. What are you going to do? You know, I mean, we're, we all make mistakes. The Bible said there will be no boasting in heaven. Well, thank you for the crown. Uh, oh, I get extra crowns because I'm so awesome. Thank you. The Bible said there will be no boasting over there. Hallelujah. There will be no boasting. There will be rewards, right? But there will be no boasting. It will be like Paul said, it wasn't I that labored. Oh. He said, I labored more than all of them. He said, but it wasn't me. It was the grace of God within me. Hallelujah. It was a gift. Church, I realize there's six, I'm sorry, there's five talent preachers, two talent and one talent. I'm probably the one, but I want to give everything I got to that one because that's a gift of grace. 
And as long as I'm faithful with that, I'm going to be able to tell Jesus, Jesus, I invested everything I had into it, and I doubled the impact of it. And then he'll say, well done. On to the next one. He's not going to stop and say, well, look how great you are. Now you, go ahead and brag for a thousand years. He's going to say, okay, next. Who's next? Who's next? <laughs> uh, and the church said, <laughs> hallelujah. And then we're all going to get to that great moment when Jesus walks out at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And we all get to see him. He's going to come by. He's going to greet each one of us and wipe away the tears from our eyes. And I wonder when that moment is. It's going to be right before Armageddon when the Bible said we're going to fall down and lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. I only, I only get a crown because of your conquering. Amen. The only reason I'm crowned is because you were crowned with a crown of thorns. Hallelujah. That's the only reason I get a crown is because you took my sin upon you and then you put your spirit in me and then it wasn't me that lived, but it was Christ within me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It wasn't me living. It was Christ within me. Because Brother Ram said, I'm always a failure. So now, finally, we get to Genesis 12. My goodness, this is going to be a long service, saints. Hallelujah. He was, in, he was in Ur. He was called to Canaan. Acts 7 says he went to Haran. That was a 600-mile walk. I'm sorry. If he, he was walking part of it, he was probably riding camel. The other, like Eliezer, was on the camel, right? Hallelujah. 600 miles ain't no joke. I flew out to Iowa last year. That was 600 miles. I looked it up. Wow, I can't imagine riding on a camel for 600 miles. Church, don't you know the devil was right there? You were an adulterer for 75 years. You're an old man. You don't even have kids. How is God going to bless you? And you know what Abraham had to say? Or Abraham had to say? He said, he had to say, I'm one of them. Amen. I'm one of them. Amen. Satan, get behind me because God's going to make a great nation out of me. God said, thus saith the Lord, God's going to bless me. He's going to make my name great and I'm going to be a blessing. Now, I know I'm customizing the song. Yeah. Right? But all the talk from the devil for 600 miles. That ain't no small trip yeah. for a 75-year-old spring chicken now. He wasn't a spring chicken. <laughs> right? He said, the deadness of my womb or, or the deadness of my body. Now, that was a little later by God's grace. But remember, the Bible said, you walk in Abraham's steps. Wasn't it a long walk, Brother Dave, when you got saved and started walking towards sanctification? Wasn't that a long walk? He said, amen. Well, he said, come on. <laughs> that same thing. Sick him, devil. <laughs> Sick that devil. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's a long step to go from just being saved. Now I'm starting to be sanctified. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's a long journey. Yeah. But was God's word sufficient or not, church? Yeah. God's promises always are sufficient. Yeah. For whatever journey you go through, if you've got thus saith the Lord, you ought to be the happiest person on the face of the earth. Hallelujah. Because you've got thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. So you see where I'm kind of going with this? And then Brother Bram said, as soon as he got saved, he made a mistake. Now think about that. God just saves him. God makes him righteous. And the very first step he does is make a mistake. Isn't that true about your life? My life? As soon as I got saved, I sure, I sure enjoyed it. But you know what? I kept chewing tobacco. I kept watching some wrong things, right? I made some mistakes. I remember arguing one time with my mom, and I had to go back and apologize right after I got saved. Ah, I, boy, I really felt bad, but then when I read the Bible, I feel really good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not good about my sin, but good because my father before me walked in the same steps. Hallelujah. And if he overcame, I know I'll overcome. Hallelujah. Yeah. And then, church, after the 600 miles, when he went to Haran, then he had to walk 400 more miles to Shechem. And that whole time he's saying, I will bless them that bless thee, and you'll curse all those that curse me. Hear that, devil? Everybody catch that? The devil's trying to curse him. You're nobody. You're an idolater. Hear that, devil? You can't curse me. God's already blessed me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. I've had numerous people on the internet try to curse me. I'm like, I just laugh like, 
not in a, a, a mocking way, but you just can't, you can't curse me. I'm already blessed. I know God's blessed me. Hallelujah. Amen. I've seen the blessing of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You can, that's, that's, that's the devil's tactic, right, just to get you to be fearful and get you distracted. If I'm a child of Abraham, I am blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, I'm going to get spanked for my sins. Yes, I'm going to fall short of God's glory. But overall, I'm blessed. Nobody can curse me. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Those same people I pray for, but then they'll they'll rebuke me, curse me, and judge me on videos and all these things like that. Now, who's got the real love of Christ? (laughs) Hallelujah, church. That's right. Oh, he wasn't done. Now he's going a thousand miles of quoting, thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord. thousand miles. But he's not done yet. This is still in chapter 12. Then he's got to go 20 miles up to Bethel to make a worship sacrifice. Most of you didn't even drive that to come to church tonight. Now, could you make it from church? Could you say, thus saith all the way to church and have a good trip and quoting the promises of God? Could you do that? Well, surely, if Abraham could do it, you could do it too. I'm talking about me. Amen. I want to overcome my mind battles on the drive to church. (laughs) Hallelujah. I want to have faith. I want to have uh, trust. I, want to, I know life and death is in the power of the tongue. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to live that, but Satan's trying to make it hard to do it. But if we surrender to God, all things are possible to them that believe. Hallelujah. Amen. He wasn't done. After Bethel, he had to go two, and then there was a drought hit the land. And now he had to go 225 miles southwest down into Egypt. And he wasn't supposed to do it. Yeah, I should, have put, oh, I should have put another dot there. He wasn't supposed to go down to Egypt. I missed a dot. The dots are these big mistakes Abraham makes. Hallelujah. Anybody ever made a big mistake other than me? Any other, okay. Oh, I'm not the only one. Praise God. Glory. I'm encouraged. I'm not the only one. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I left one out there. He shouldn't have took Lot. God said, get away from your kindred. But see, even his mistakes, it led to Lot's salvation. Hallelujah. Praise God. God found it. It was the permissive will of God, right? But even the permissive will of God, God still heard Abraham's prayers. God still remembered Abraham's prayers, and God saved Lot's soul. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Then down in Egypt, he lies to Pharaoh. Brother Bram said he was a coward. Now, that's exactly what we do sometimes. We don't tell all the truth. Is that right? And that's a coward, right? Or we get into situations uh, we didn't say enough. Hallelujah. But that's common to believers. In other words, everybody's sinful. Everybody has a sin nature. And each day, you got to crucify it. Paul did not say, I die weekly on the Sabbath. No. Well, I wish it was that easy, don't you, Brother Mike? My goodness. But Derek, don't you wish you could just come to church on Sunday and say, I'm dying for the rest of this week. And then the rest of the week, you have no, no temptations at all. You're just walking on cloud nine, praying, reading your Bible. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. Well, I wish it was like that, don't you? <laughs> Hallelujah. But that's not how it is. He said every day that, that, that sin nature will rise up and try to live, and you've got to crucify it. Amen. You've got to die to that in order that Christ might shine through your life. Hallelujah. So three big-time mistakes by the father of our faith in the first chapter. See where I'm going? Hallelujah. Brother Abraham said, God told Abraham, separate yourself. But did Abraham do it? No, sir. He disobeyed, thus saith the Lord. See, church, don't feel bad. You disobey God's word, don't feel bad. Just keep going. He disobeyed, thus saith the God said, separate yourself. No. You tell God no. Disobeyed the word of God? God never gave up with him. God never said, I'm going to throw you away. I'm going to start with somebody else. You were chosen before the foundation of the world. There is some real good character in there. It's just going to take some years of molding and shaping and trials and tests to bring out that real father-like faith. Hallelujah. Amen. It's going to take a few years. Hallelujah. This don't happen overnight. God took care of his sins overnight. But the character wasn't molded like we'd like it to be. Like Brother McBride said, microwave tests, right? Real quick. 
All right, microwave, now, I, now I'm all fired up again. Hallelujah. Now I've got everything. Everything's in order. And think of all these miles. He's had to travel with Sarai. Oh, honey, God's going to bless our family. I'm telling you, God's going to bless our family. God told me. I saw the vision. I heard the voice. I heard everything. It's thus saith the Lord, honey. Okay, Abraham, okay. Oh, all right. Now by chapter 17, she's laughing about it. Or chapter, I'm sorry, chapter 18, she's laughing about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he just kept moving on. He kept going along in his journey, hanging on to thus saith the Lord. What are you doing? The same thing. Going around my journey. I'm, go, I'm going dr up and down the highways. I'm going about my day every day just saying God has a purpose. I'm on a journey. I'm a child of God. I'm a seed of Abraham. God has blessed me. Hallelujah. God's got a purpose for me. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Right. Chapter 13, he returns to Canaan. He's got to come back 225 more miles by camel. Walking some of it too. Hallelujah. You know, one thing I want to say, church, is this is what I learned. You know, sports, of course, are not of God, right? But they do teach certain lessons. That's why Paul said, he said, beat your body, right, like a boxer. He said, you don't, it sounds like you're beating the air. He said, a real boxer doesn't just beat the air. He's got to go out and hit somebody. <laughs> so Paul would, he said, I run the race with perseverance. He saw the Olympians there in Corinth, and he saw this. He said, wow, they're doing all this discipline to, to gain a, a natural thing. He said, but we can learn from that. We should have discipline to gain spiritual things. But one thing I learned, especially in college football, high school was easy because I was faster than everybody. I got to college, I wasn't the fastest anymore, <laughs> nor was I the biggest. I was just a common average Joe, which that's okay. I, I didn't mind it. <laughs> but my first time on the field, Michael Vick was out there, and I was on defense, and I'm standing in front of 90,000 people. And the coach said, don't let him scramble, tackle him. So the, 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 the play started, and I just let my guy run right by me because I'm just staring at Michael Vick. It was on Sports Center, so I got, I got infamous that way. <laughs> and as soon as I see him throw the ball, I'm like, oh, that's my guy. And on Sports Center, I'm diving at his feet. And the guy goes into the end zone. That was the last play I played that entire year. I got to the sideline. The coach had some select words for me. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> I felt smaller than that. It took me years to overcome that, by the way. But in years on, I would, you know, play, and I became a starter by my senior year. I was a starter. And every now and, you know, every now and then, I'd, I'd have a touchdown thrown on me. And my coach would walk up, and he'd say, Smitty. He said, don't feel bad. He said, turn the page. <laughs> or in practice, i make a mistake. He'd say, Smitty, don't, don't feel bad, Smitty. Turn the page. Move on. Amen. All right. All right. And after enough times of that, you realize, that's right. He'd say, Smitty, short memory. Short memory, Smitty. Forget that last drive. We got a drive coming up. We're not done. We got more battles to fight. We can still win the victory. Hallelujah. <laughs> that's, what the, that's what the lesson of Abraham is. Forget your past. Move on. Press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. There's victories ahead. Hallelujah. So I always got that in my mind. Turn the page, Smitty. Turn the page. Move on. Don't dwell on your mistakes, Abraham. He did for a while, but eventually he got the victory, church. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes, like I said, I went through a season of battle, right? And, but eventually I got the victory. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, thank God. Turn the page. Move on. Hallelujah. God's got more for us. Hallelujah. Oh, it's so true. Forget your mistakes, church. Now, chapter 14. Abraham delivers Lot. He had to travel 160 miles with his 318 servants. That's not a lot because he was against four, four countries. Four countries of armies. Hallelujah. But Abraham knew this. If God called me, who can be against me? Amen. <laughs> If God's on my side, it don't matter who's on the other side. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Reminds us of Gideon. Gideon only had 300. He was one of the 300. <laughs> Abraham had 18 more than Gideon. 
But it didn't matter because it wasn't about Gideon's power. It was about God's power. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what we must realize in every battle. It's not about our power. It's about God's power. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. In every battle, in every test, in every temptation, greater is Christ that's within us than he that's in the world. And I love it. On the way back, he meets God. He's coming back, and all of a sudden he sees a priest standing up there by Jerusalem. He was the king of Salem. He's passing through Salem. He he must have felt, I feel a holy presence around here. My goodness, this feels like when I was back in Ur, when I heard that voice. And all of a sudden, I'm sure sure I heard, Abram, possessor of heaven and earth. Yes, Lord. (laughs) And he turned probably to see a voice, but didn't see a voice. He saw a high priest. He said, I'm going to bless you, Abram. You're a possessor of heaven and earth. And Abraham said, praise God. Here's my tithes from my victory. Hallelujah. Amen. Nobody had to tell him to pay tithes. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was in him. He, he realized the only reason I got this is because God fought for me. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the guy that helped me to get the victory. So the least I can do is give him 10%. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. It's the only reason I got the victory. But he said, oh, this is a new form. He's changed his mask. God and Morphe. Yeah. The masterpiece. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. He meets Melchizedek. And he sees, oh, God's in another form. God is my priest in heaven. I've got a priest in heaven. A priest is someone who stands in the place for you. I've got somebody, Brother Wesley, that stands in my place in heaven. Hallelujah. Heaven loves me. Heaven has accepted me. No wonder the Bible says, I'm accepted in the beloved. Hallelujah. See, each revelation, he learns more about what God thinks about him. Amen. Oh, church, I hope you know what God thinks about you. Hallelujah. He loves you. He died for you, praise God. He calls you his bride. Amen. He wants to meet you at a heavenly meeting in the air in the sweet, sweet by and by. (laughs) Oh, my. So he sees him in another form. I know that voice. I know the voice of the Holy Spirit when it speaks to me. Hallelujah. How many know that voice? (laughs) It's a scriptural voice every time. Amen. Amen. Chapter 15. Hallelujah. Abraham here has God talk to him again. And God tells him, he visits him in a dream and a vision. And you remember, though, this time he came in a different form. He said, get these sacrifices, divide them, lay them out right here. And when he looked over the sacrifices, what did he see? He didn't see a high priest. He saw a pillar of fire. Oh, just like Brother Branham. Hallelujah. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Now he's in a new form. Before it was voice or maybe vision. Then it was the high priest. And now he sees him in a pillar of fire. Amen. And I love, it shows God's pillar of fire came down to vindicate his sacrifice. Glory. In other words, God will come down and vindicate that you gave the right sacrifice to him. But just like the devil always does, he sent those birds to try to defile the sacrifice. That's what happens to us, like on the way to church. Some evil thought will try to get in our mind, try to defile our sacrifice. Well, what did Abraham do? Did he say, okay, that's fine. I'm just going to waste this service. I'm just going to waste this sacrifice. The birds can do whatever they want. I give up. I quit. No, he didn't do that. He said, if God told me to give this sacrifice, and God is here, amen. If God is here in our services, amen. If God answers our prayers, then I'm going to purify this sacrifice. I'm going to shoo those birds away. I'm going to kick those birds out. I'm going to cast those devils out. Hallelujah. (laughs) Amen. Brother Abraham said, Abraham, cast out devils. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what Brother Brooks said was meant, meant so much to him. He said, in my sacrifice, I don't want anything to defile it. I've got a right to cast out those evil spirits. Amen. I don't want my, if I'm going to make a sacrifice, I want God to receive it. 
but it's my responsibility to keep it undefiled. Hallelujah. <laughs> I've got something I can do. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, that's beautiful. And remember, in this chapter, God gave him an unconditional covenant. But church, you've got to remember, unconditional only means from God's point of view. What I mean by that is that Abraham still had to keep the conditions on the earth. Everybody with me? We always hear Brother Abraham say it's true. God's covenant unconditional, unconditional, unconditional. That's true. But you've got to keep the conditions of it. God did not bless Abram until he separated himself from Lot. He had to meet the conditions. Hallelujah. So see, don't, let, let's not stumble over that. Like, this, this is something where a lazy Christian would say. Like, you know, if Satan puts a lazy spirit on somebody. Well, God's just, God's just going to keep the promises for me. It's unconditional. I don't have nothing to do about it. Shame on that kind of attitude. Amen. The Bible says, make your calling and election sure. Amen. Beat your body, bring it under subjection so you're not a castaway. We see all these castaways falling away from the message. It's so sad. I pray for them. I try to warn them. But they ain't got something they can do about that. They don't have to be cast away. They can come back to Christ. Hallelujah. They cast away the modesty standards. They cast that away. They cast away God is one person. They cast that away. That's true. They cast away. And I made a list. I told the brothers I've made a video. I have 110 False doctrines that Brother Branham corrected. That proves we're the bride of Christ. Because the bride is washed in the waters of the creed? No. She's washed in the waters of the word. Amen. The word. The difference is the word. Hallelujah. Brother Branham said there's hundreds of differences. Glory. He says that in the invisible union of the bride. He's showing there's a huge difference between the bride and the churches. He said there's hundreds of them. He names water baptism and cutting hair and one more, and makeup. He says, but there's hundreds of them. I just spent a few hours on it. I found 110. And church, that's how it is with the real child of God. There's hundreds of differences between the bride and the false church. Like I use that illustration at, at, at our church. I said, there's hundred differences I love about my wife compared to any other woman that was trying to catch my eye. Hello, brothers. <laughs> there's a lot of women I could have chose. All you brothers could say that. And thank God for our humble sisters that wait and wait on God. But that man has, he has every he has every choice before him. But he said he finds that one. There's something special about her. The way she smiles, the way she cooks, the way she laughs, all these things. Her, you know, her understanding about these things, our spiritual talk. Now, pretty soon you start getting all these reasons. That's just like Jesus did with the bride. Amen. Amen. I want a real bride, someone who's in the word all the way. <laughs> Amen. That's going to be my bride. And he that's the bride, I'm sorry, he that has the bridegroom has a bride. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Remember, that's what God says about Abraham in Genesis 19 or 18. I know he'll keep my commands. I know he'll train his house to do justice and judgment. That's the difference. Like I gave the example at our church too. I said our hearts are turned back to the apostolic fathers. Let me give you an exa uh, uh, example. Well, I mean, there's lots of them. But one of them is, you know, in college I was on a... a uh, mission trip. No, they weren't mission trips, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it was just like a trip to Florida and build somebody a house, which is good. That's good. That's good. But that's not a mission trip. <laughs> and I saw these guys with tattoos, and I was, you know, a football player. I'm like, I'd like to get a tattoo. So I called up my mom, and my mom said, here, call pastor. I called Pastor Trowbridge, right? And uh, so, so my, my, my evangelical friends were saying, yeah, oh, you know, tattoos are okay. Yeah, they're fine. In other words, their absolute wasn't the word. Now, when I called up pastor, he said, God bless you. He said, let me, uh, I'll let you talk to Kathy. <laughs> now, that might have been not, not the right one, <laughs> right, because we don't believe in women preachers. <laughs> but I didn't know that at that time. <laughs> and she said, go to Le Leviticus, I think it was 19, where you don't make any cuttings in your flesh. And as soon as I heard that, now, church, this is my own experience. As soon as I read that, something said, don't get a tattoo. <laughs> I wasn't even the message. I didn't know one thing. But that's an example of how, at least in that place, they took it back to the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Right? Now let's ask them some more questions. Can a woman cut her hair and wear makeup? 
<laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> See, what they'll do, instead of going to the Word, they'll go to creed or tradition or something like that. But you and I, in every question, we got one place where there's an answer. We got one absolute, and that's God's holy Word. Hallelujah. That proves our hearts have been turned back to the apostolic fathers. Hallelujah. (laughs) That's right. Amen. Glory. Chapter 16. Now, this looks like the lust of the flesh, but I could be wrong on this. But why else would Abram take another wife, right? Do you think that was just pride? Probably not. Any man, Brother Bram said, any healthy, red blooded man, when he sees a, a nice looking woman, something passes over him, right? So Hagar was probably younger, right? So it wasn't all just maybe, uh, you know, Sarah was trying to just have, I mean, she was trying to have natural seed, right? But this was a big stumble. And Israel's going through the current stumble with it right now. They're still going through it. Still. Now remember, church, that Israel army, though, they're not, all, uh, they're not all justified in what they do. Remember, there's only 144,000 out of there that are going to get the Holy Ghost. So be careful, you know, rooting for everything that Israel does. You can't really root for everything Israel does. Right? I learned that. I was like, oh, that's right. That's right. That's true. Got to be very careful. There's a lot of sinners in there, too. But this huge mistake, he takes Hagar and Ishmael's born. A church, by those colors, he still doesn't have the seal of the Holy Ghost. By the colors, right? By, by the type. But did God ever get rid of him? Did God ever say, I'm not your friend anymore? You've gone too far. No, God remembers. Oh, we had all those good talks on all 1,000 miles on all those trips. We had a lot of good fellowship on there. <laughs> God, you said this. That's right. Yes, Lord, and you said this. Thank you, Lord. You promised this. I don't know how it's going to happen, but you promised me, Lord. (laughs) Hallelujah. Abraham was a friend of God. Hallelujah. What do you do to a friend? You talk to him. Don't you? At least when you see him. (laughs) Right? Can't be friends with everybody. But when you got a friend, you talk to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And no doubt he had many mind battles over all these miles, thousands of miles. But he kept the faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, chapter 17. Beautiful chapter. God says, Abraham, or Abram, walk before me and be thou perfect. That's quite a statement. He's already seen him fail one, two, three, four major times. Even lied about his wife. Lied. He wasn't a liar. He just got tempted by lying. He didn't lie all the time. He just lied in those pressure situations. He wasn't a worker of iniquity. Hallelujah. But here now, chapter 17, God visits him again by vision. So now it's a form, again, that same form of a vision. And he says, walk before me and be thou perfect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, I am El Shaddai, (laughs) the one you draw from. Lord, I've been serving you all these years, and what's the the best illustration? Keep drawing from me. Lay in my bosom. Amen. Amen. Stay connected to the source of eternal life. Hallelujah. Stay closely connected to the source of the promise of God, and God will bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Glory. God says, circumcise all the males on the eighth day. He does it. And Brother Ram says this in Revelation chapter 4, 1961. He said, therefore, being justified by faith, second place, wash, sanctify, then fill with the Holy Ghost. A a Baptist brother said, I want to ask you something, Brother Branham. You say, what more could Abraham do but believe God? And God imputed him for righteousness. Now, here's the argument where people say, well, I don't have nothing to do with it. Uh, God's uh, it's unconditional. Same argument. Well, I'll just keep doing everything the same. Well, eventually, God will give me the Holy Ghost. No, the Bible said he gives the Holy Ghost to them that obey him. Amen. Acts 5, I believe it is. 42, if I'm not mistaken. Acts 5. Amen. Hallelujah. But see, that's that same attitude, that, that, that lazy attitude where people don't want to crucify the lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes, the pride of life. They don't want to crucify that. What else could he do, Brother Branham? He said that's all he could do right here. He believed God, but God, to accept his belief, 
give him the seal of circumcision and sealed him, showing that God had to accept his faith. He said, if you want to put it down, put down Ephesians 4.30, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of your redemption. Hallelujah. God gives you the gift of faith, but he wants you to keep working with that, growing that faith, and then he'll seal it. He'll mark it. The Bible says like an imprint. He'll, he'll imprint it like a, uh, like a cattle and the brand. He'll brand the Holy Ghost on your soul. That means you're forever, you're forever his. You're going to reach your destination. Hallelujah. God said, I'm giving you the seal of circumcision. Then God says, I'm going to visit Sarah, and she's going to have a baby. You know what Abraham did? He didn't say, oh, glory to God, hallelujah. He said, <laughs> uh, he laughed. He laughed at thus saith the Lord in unbelief. Uh, in other words, uh, God, that's impossible. I mean, I know you got a sense of humor, but that's really funny. Did God throw him away and say, oh, anyone who laughs at me, I will burn you for, I'll burn you for thousands of years. <laughs> No, God knew what was in his heart. God still loved his faithful, humble servant, praise God, who was prone to mistakes and prone sometimes to laugh at the promise of God. Church, sometimes when we go through our hardest trials, if we're honest, we'd probably say, well, I don't know how God is going to give me a body change to make the rapture. After some of the days I've had, after some of the things I've said and done, after some of the things I've thought and planned to do, I don't know how God's going to give me a body change. But God will say, wake up, son of Abraham. Remember who you are. <laughs> That's what Brother Nick preached for us last Saturday. Remember who you are. It's spiritual placement. God placed you into the Holy Ghost. God placed you in this message. Hallelujah. God placed you there. God justified you, sanctified you. He filled you with the Holy Ghost. Wake up, Son of God. Wake up. Remember the promise. You got your eyes on the wrong thing. Get your eyes off yourself. Get your eyes on Christ the sacrifice. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, you know, he wasn't the only one that laughed at God. Oh, God, you got a good sense of humor. I ain't joking. <laughs> Hallelujah, church. <laughs> church, God can take our complaints. God can take our mistakes. Remember, he's already righteous. He's already the father of the faith in the mind of God. He was already chosen, saints, before the what? Before the foundation of Israel? No, 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 that's not. Uh, the foundation of uh, Pangea? No, 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 no. Before the foundation of the world. <laughs> Trying to wake us up a little bit. Holly. Amen. I was chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world, and the proof of that is that I believe Christ. Amen. Remember, Abraham's faith, I'm sorry, Abraham's righteousness was based on one thing, faith. Amen. What is faith? It means trust in the Greek. That was it. It wasn't works. God gave Abraham righteousness just because he said, I believe that. Not by works, but by grace. Amen. Abraham said, you can't even work yourself into it. God's got to give you that faith. Even the faith to believe God came from him. Oh, that's a, that's a rigged system. I love that. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's a system that's going to work, amen. God gives me that eternal portion of faith, and this faith is going to take me all the way. Hallelujah. Amen. It's his gift. It never was about my efforts. Hallelujah. It was about his gift of grace. Hallelujah. Amen. And I was righteous, Brother Daniel, as soon as I said amen. I believe that. Yeah. Without doing one thing, without one work, I was already righteous. <laughs> oh, glory, glory. That's why I love the gospel. Because I want to give as much effort as I can. I just read last night, I want to be diligent, don't you? I, but I know at the end of the road, it has nothing really to do with me. It's about God's grace working in my life. Amen. Salvation was a gift, right? Paul's hard work was a gift. Church, he's a five, he's a five talent preacher. That means he has more money to work with. That was God's grace. Right? So I, I can accept that. If God just made me a one-talent preacher of a tiny little church, 
then I can accept that. That's all I got. But I'm thankful I got something. Hallelujah. I'm thankful I'm saved. Hallelujah. It's a gift. It's not mine. It's his. And I just got to be faithful with a little. And if I'm faithful with a little, Brother Wesley, he'll make me ruler over much. You know the scripture. (laughs) Amen. Hallelujah. We can just be faithful with a little bit. Hallelujah. Then eyes not seen, ears not heard, nor entered in the heart of man the joys that God has prepared for you and I. The Bible said he'll make us rulers. Some will rule over ten cities. Some will rule over one. Hallelujah. The Bible said overcomers get rods of iron. In other words, let me call this meeting to order. This is my dominion here. This is the city of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, Let's see. It's the city of the Lord Jesus Christ managed by his servant, Jesse Smith. This is the one city that I got control over. Let me call this meeting to order. All you, the Bible said they'll they'll, they'll argue. The Bible said all those humans will argue and they've got to come down and get rebuked, the Bible says, in the millennium. Let's call this meeting to order. Now, who's complaining? Who's doing all these things? Now, you say you're sorry. We're going to make this right. And now you go, go back out and work now. And then the Bible says, before I call, I like to talk to Brother Cam today. I like to talk to Brother Simon. Before I call, Brother Cam and Simon will be there. Ah. Before I call, he'll answer. Oh. <laughs> we'll have glorified bodies, Brother Cam. We'll be able to go. We'll be able to turn and, you know, just walk through walls and, let me finish this meeting. I like to go talk. Oh, he's right here. Glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Such amazing blessings to the friends of God. Hallelujah. To the family of Abraham. Hope I'm not wearing you out by God's grace. Hallelujah. They, she, she, he laughs at thus saith the Lord. And church, remember, we got thus saith the Lord. I was talking about this with the brothers. The fullness of Pentecost will be in the bride. That's thus saith the Lord. Joel 2, 23 through 26. What's it look like? We have vats overflowing with wine. We're going to have a lot of stimulation. If I had this much stimulation on this service, if we had so much stimulation last year when we preached on David dancing, I'd say we're going to have some stimulation before the rapture, brother. (laughs) If this is this good, what is it going to be like at the rapture time? Amen. (laughs) Overflows with wine. Overflows with, with, with wheat and barley. And every spiritual gift is going to overflow with oil. People are going to be getting the Holy Ghost. Amen. (laughs) Right before the rapture. If it's this good now, what is it going to be like then? Hallelujah. You know, we had a 30-minute testimony at our church, Brother Cam, where everybody come up and said the blessings of that dance service. Remember that last year? There were some supernatural testimonies out of that. The one family said, uh, on January 1st, we wrote the word, experience. That's our word for the year. We want an experience with God. That was Sister Naomi. She said, I want all my children to have experience with God. You remember last year? For three hours, we danced up here, sighed and cried, and each one of them said they got the Holy Ghost. They got that experience. Numerous of my daughters said they got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Right? If we got it like this, if this is so joyful now, what's it going to be like at the squeeze time? <laughs> Hallelujah. It's thus saith the Lord. And I don't know the persecution how it's going to play out. I don't know what all the pressures political wise. I don't know. But the Bible said, and Brother Abraham said, thus saith the Lord, the fullness of Pentecost will be in the bride, and my people will never be ashamed of the message. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, it's glorious. So let's try not to laugh. Let's try not to laugh when, when, when we're reminded you're going to have a body change. Your, your body is going to be swallowed up in life. It's not a joke. <laughs> it's thus saith the Lord. Somebody's going to receive that. I'm making ready tonight to receive it. <laughs> That's why I come to the house of God. <laughs> Amen. I to be ready. Hallelujah. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. When the Savior calls, I'll answer. Here I am, Jesus. <laughs> when he calls for me, I will hear. Why? Because I hear what the word says right now. Amen. When my Savior calls, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. 
Don't you think Abraham was doing that too? Remember the Bible said in chapter 18, yeah, now go to chapter 18. The Bible said he was sitting down there basically waiting for God to show up. I wonder when he's going to show up next. I wonder which form he's going to show up. Will he be a pillar of fire again? Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I wonder if I'll see a vision again. Maybe he'll be in the high priest robes. Hallelujah. Thank God. Oh, it's hot out here. All of a sudden he sees three men. Oh, God's three persons. No, no, no. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's not. No, no. <laughs> and the Bible said he ran to him and he said, oh, he said, let, let, stay here. Let, uh, let me minister to you. Let me get some food. Let me wash your feet. He didn't look like a high priest. He just like, looked like a regular man. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Change his form, but he's got the same voice. Abraham, Abraham. Amen. I come to visit you, Abraham. Amen. Well, let me make ready for you. If God's here, let me get out some good food. Praise God. Let me get out my best songs. Let me get out my best clothes. Let me get out my best praise. Let me get out my best dance. Let me give God the best while he's here. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let me give him the best that I got because it's God. And he keeps showing up. Amen. He keeps speaking to me. He keeps manifesting himself to me. He keeps changing his form. But it's the same God over and over again who's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Let me give him the best I got. Then he says, Abraham, now, he said, Sarah, I'm going to visit you. Sarah's going to have a time, a child about this time next year. She said, <laughs> God said, Sarah, or Abraham, Sarah laughed. No, I didn't. No, you did laugh. God could have struck her dead. But God didn't because she still had promises to fulfill. That's why God don't get rid of us. He still got promises to fulfill. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even if you laugh at his promise, his promise is not going to return void. Amen. And, I, and this was, the Brother Brooks said this helped him a lot too. God loved Abraham and Sarah so much that he came there to make them believe. Amen. They didn't believe, but God loved them so much, he said, I'm going to make them believe. I'm going to give them sign, miracle, wonder, visitation. Thus saith the Lord, I'm coming myself to make sure they don't miss it. God is not going to let you miss it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He will not let you miss it. You're a child of God. You're a seed of Abraham. God is going to make sure you believe this rapture. Hallelujah. Amen. How many believe that? Yes. He had to visit time and time again because they just laughed at it. Oh, impossible. 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 God, God has a sense of humor. I'm not joking about this. I might have a sense of humor, hair that fox. But this, I'm not joking about this. This is the reality. You're going to have a body change. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. I am going to change your body Amen. about this time next year. Amen. How many believe that? Yeah. <laughs> Glory. So she laughs in the chapter. See the real faith of Abraham. This is the chapter where God said, I know Abraham. Abraham wants to know what's going to happen to Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, look, did you see what Joe Biden did uh, with, with Easter tomorrow? He made that National Trans Day. It's the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he's making it a trans day. We'll see what God's response is. Now, God already knows they were going to do that. It's a day to celebrate trans on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the very reason he died, was to pardon such wicked sins and abominations like that. And now they're going to glory in abominations on the day of the great. They're, they're magnifying himself against the greatest day of all time. They're distracting people away from, think about this, the risen Christ. They're taking people away from the risen Christ who's, got, who's going to have blood on his vesture. They're distracting them off that and getting them on the, one of the most wicked, perverted abominations ever. Child mutilation. That's what this president did, a Catholic president. That's right. yeah. St. Patrick was about as much Catholic as I am. Amen. That's what Brother Ram said. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Think about that. Now in type, he's already got the baptism of the Holy Ghost in type. He's already sealed into the, the, the covenant. He's got the seal. But he still makes mistakes even though he's sealed. 
and God still forgives him. And God still gives him another chance, another chance. God's writing your story. The Bible said, remember Jeremiah 29, I have good thoughts for you. I've got an expected end for you. Thoughts of peace and not destruction. Remember, the Holy Ghost has three elements. Paul tells us righteousness, joy, and peace. The kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, but it's in righteousness, joy, and peace. How many want those three elements in your life? May that be the testimony of my life and your life. People can see Christ's righteousness in me. They can see God's joy in me. Hallelujah. (laughs) I hope somebody can see it. Hallelujah. Uh, And somebody can see God's peace in my life. Now, that's one I battle a lot sometimes. I battle that sometimes by God's grace. But God is with us. Hallelujah. And now look, he's in type. He's got the Holy Ghost. And what does he do in chapter 18? He intercedes God. There's 50, 40, 30, 25, 20, 10. And God hears him every time he prays. God hears you every time you pray. I got a good testimony here. We had a brother visit the church a couple years ago. He's from Illinois. He doesn't have a message church. He believes Brother Brown's a prophet. And he said, well, you're my home church, uh, even though you're so far away in Ohio and Illinois. His name's Brother Philip. And he sent me a text a couple weeks ago, and he said, Brother Jesse, I think this is it. The doctor told me I'm dying. I think this is it. And I said, oh, brother, let, let's believe God's promise. The doctor said everything's shutting down, all the organs shutting down. He's, I think he's 80. And I just want to rem- remind you that God hears our prayers, even the s- most simple thing. I sent him a few texts and just told him we're praying for him. I asked the church. I texted the church, let's pray and fast for him. We had a day of fasting, and I think he was just one name on numerous names on the list. I mean, the people are kidnapped around the world. People are... Uh, battling cancer, all these things. Here's a man, he's living a long life, but he just wants healing. You know, he just, he thinks this might be the, I'm sorry, he, he thought it was time to go. I don't, I don't, I don't even know if he w- was open to being healed. But he called me up last, or two Wednesdays ago, and he said, Brother Jesse, I just want to tell you and your church that God heard your, heard your prayers, and prayer has changed everything. He said, I had dizziness, my dizziness is healed. I had a blood infection, my blood infection is healed. I had a kidney infection, I'm healed. I had a urine infection, it's healed. My blood sugar is healed. My blood pressure is healed. Even my bed sore is healed. And then the, the, and then the voicemail went blank. He went on for about two more minutes. So I imagine there's around 15 testimonies. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Hallelujah. He hears your prayers. It may not even feel like it, but Abraham, just pray, hallelujah. Just intercede. Just ask God for mercy. That was a great encouragement to me. He said, you're our home church because we don't have a home church. Well, they used to go to the Baptist, but they got tired of the Baptist doctrine, you know, getting more lax and everything like that, more sinful. But Just be encouraged. He said, I want to tell you, prayer changes things. Hallelujah. Now, how are we doing here? I'm trying to finish up here. Now, we go to chapter, oh yeah, Sarah, Sarah lied to God. Now, look at all these red marks. Look at all these marks against them. But we got to forget those kind of marks, and we got to press on toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And those, just because they're red, don't mean danger. I believe those red marks mean the blood of the, the sacrifice covered over his mistakes. Just like it covers over all your mistakes. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Genesis 19, Sodom is destroyed, and there's Abraham is watching from afar. And the Bible said, God remembered Abraham. The Bible never said God remembered Lot. God remembered Abraham. So all you Abraham seed, I remember we prayed for Wendy's family last year at that dance service. Let's keep praying, because God remembers your prayers. I'm talking about those that separate themselves from Sodom. It's a perfect type. We should be so encouraged tonight that God hears our prayers. We're not living among Sodom. We're not putting up with that. We are totally separated from that. We're not babying that. We're not giving in to that. We're living separate. We're living separate like Abraham. We're the child seed of Abraham. And God will hear our prayers just like he hears Abraham's prayers. Hallelujah. 
Let that be an encouragement to us. That God will hear our prayers. Amen. Chapter 20, Abraham and Sarah go down to Gerar. Another 40 miles. Remember this whole time, Abraham's saying, God's going to bless me. He's going to give me a son. He still don't have a son. He still don't have Isaac. He's got to keep that confession all these miles, all these years. Amen. Hallelujah. This entire journey, he's got to keep confessing the promise of God. God said so. God said I don't see one effect, Sister Allie. I don't see one effect of God's promise, but it's still going to come to pass. Amen. If God said it, it's going to come to pass. Amen. It cannot fail. Amen. So he keeps the testimony. He goes down there, and he lies again. A, holy, no, a man who's got the Holy Ghost in type lies again. Sometimes those demons come back. Let me just share this personally. I had some pride when I first became a message believer. I don't know if you guys ever experienced this, but I'm ashamed to say this. But I was so prideful by the time, and I was like, how do these people struggle with this? I'll never struggle with that. And I found out about 20 years later I struggled with it. <laughs> and you know what? My zeal had eaten up my wisdom, and it was a spirit of pride. God had to show me these things. I said, well, I'll never struggle with that again. Well, just wait till God pulls back his anointing off your life. That's what he did to Hezekiah. Remember that? Hezekiah threw his arms against the wall. You remember why he did that? He did that because he didn't want to die because he had no son. He had no child. So God said, set your house in order. You're going to die. He said, I don't, and basically he was saying, I don't have an heir. God, you've seen my life. And God said, okay, I'll give you my permissive will. It would have been better that he didn't have a son because those sons were awful kings. But after that, after God gave him the permissive will, the Bible said the Lord withdrew his presence off his life. Now that's what I don't want to have to happen, but it happens sometimes. I'm, tell, I'm telling you by experience. Things I thought I never would battle, I ended up battling again. And I started questioning, am I even saved? Now, you all see my life. You can would say, oh, he's, he's a good man or whatever he said. You know, he's, he's a Christian. He's got a testimony. But in my battles, I'm like, am I even saved? Do I have the Holy Ghost or not? Are you Abraham's seed or not? I'm battling with something I used to never battle with. And just like Abraham, it comes back to try you and test you. That happened to Ahab too. Now he was a sinner. But the Holy Spirit told him, now this enemy is going to come back at this hour. You better get yourself prepared. The first time he obeyed, the second time he didn't. Church, that's how it is. Satan left Jesus for a season, but you better believe he came back. And so I learned that. I learned these things. I thought, Wesley, I thought, oh, I'll never struggle with this. My, I'm walking on top of the mountains. I had all these mountaintops. Well, I hadn't been through a few valleys yet. I tell you, church, God has really blessed my life. I've seen people really struggle with, I mean, talking about losing, losing loved ones, and I mean, really hard times. God has really protected our lives. But when I go through this battle, I'm like, am I even saved? Do I even have the Holy Ghost? And you know what it took? It took a Holy Ghost preacher like Brother Dennis McBride to come by <laughs> and preach the word of God to me. And I said, Amen. That's right. I believe that. And I instantly, after repentance, I instantly saw my life go up another level. My, my joy back. My dedication back. My diligence back. My victory back. Hallelujah. Amen. And I was reminded, that's exactly what happened to Abraham. No doubt. He would have said, no doubt, brother Simon. He would have said, honey, I'll never lie again and say you're not my wife. Please forgive me. I'll never do that again. Well, guess what happened? You know, brothers, we make our wives all these promises. I'll get you these chickens. No, that's me. I'll buy you chickens. I'll buy you. And then you're like, oh, I really don't want to do that. Well, I already spoke it. <laughs> I got to do it now. But Abraham, Abraham said, I'll probably never do this. I'll never do this again. And he comes around, and when faced life or death, look what happened. He compromised. He's already got the seal. He's already sealed in, brother. He's already sealed in the covenant. But a sin from the past comes back 
and haunts him. And then God comes down and shows him favor, and he didn't even deserve it. <laughs> the king's like, Lord, I had integrity. I didn't know this about Sarah. He said, give the prophet his wife back, and he's got to pray for you. I know the integrity of your heart. That's why I wouldn't let you defile her. But you're not going to get blessing on your house. Remember all the, all the awful things that happened, the barrenness to come to the house. He said, it's not going to go until you give it back. And then you got to bless him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. Now, it's true. Abraham was a much stronger believer than, than Abimelech. Just like David. Samuel said David was a better believer than Saul. So there's wise and foolish version all throughout the Bible. Saul said, I'm going to take the kingdom from you, or Samuel said, I'm going to take the kingdom from you and give it to somebody better than you. That means he was better at loving God. Amen. He had more talents. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He was more surrendered to the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he was better. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It's not prideful. It's not bragging. It's the facts. Amen. Hallelujah. The spiritual reality, like Lot. Lot was drawn by Sodom. All these, Abraham was mature. Abraham understood. He had revelation. He had wisdom. He knows that doesn't please God. I'm not letting this defile my family. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. So 40 miles and then 40 miles back. I thought you said you'd never lie again. Well, I, I thought I did. I thought I would. I thought I wouldn't do that. Please forgive me, hon. Any brothers ever have to say that? Please forgive me, darling. I got to say it more than I want to admit. <laughs> but so did my dad, Abraham. So did my father, Abraham. Amen. Let me try to bring this down here. Chapter. Now, look at this. This is beautiful. In the very next chapter, Isaac is born. And notice, after this birth, after this rapture, after this body change, no more mistakes are ever recorded. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What a beautiful type. Amen. After we meet Christ in the air, we're given a brand new body to wit. The adoption, the body change, never more to sin again. A glorified body like unto his glorious body. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I'm, uh, I told people this before. That's what I most look forward to about the rapture. I get a new body, and I don't have to sin anymore. I don't have to embarrass my Lord anymore. I don't have to grieve Christ anymore. That's, you might be excited about the gold streets. and all. I'm excited about I never have to sin again. And if that's all he gave me, that would be enough. Amen. Just let me look at him. Just let me look at him for 10,000 years, and I never have to do anything contrary to his Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That'll be enough for me. That's all I got. I would say, thank God, that's enough. That is, that's plenty. Hallelujah. That's plenty. Just make me like him. Amen. Lord, just make me like you. Because I don't like being like me. <laughs> you understand? Like, I don't like being like me. Because I'm my own worst enemy. I'm an awful enemy, Brother Derek. You don't want to get on my bad side. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> I'm an, I, I still have a sin nature inside of here. But notice, after the, after the body change, no more mistakes recorded. You know, the same thing was recorded about Esther. They went through the book of Esther. There never was a sin recorded against Esther. Why? Because she's a type of the bride. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. No more mistakes. They got the body change. Hagar's cast out. They're at Barsheba. They travel 55 miles. He travels 55 miles to offer up Isaac. Now look, here's a, 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 here's a Calvary type after the rapture type. That's why you can't do everything chronological in the Bible. Even Sodom is destroyed before the body change in this chapter. 
That's why it proves the Holy Spirit struck Brother Branham to say, Thus saith the Lord, the last sign to the Gentiles is this Son of Man ministry. Because yeah. it, just, it just pulled it out of anywhere. Right. Just like Paul. Paul would go to Isaiah 25. Brother Cam's read it. And the Bible said, death will be swallowed up in victory. Don't say nothing about no it's meeting in the air. It just says, death is swallowed up in victory. And Paul picks it off the page and says, that's me. That's the rapture. I'll meet you in the air. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory. And he's got to travel 55 miles back. And the Lord said, I'm going to test you. He said, I'm going to test you. What do you love more? Do you love, my, do you love the gifts more or do you love the giver more? That's a great test after you got the Holy Ghost. What do you love more, the blessings of God or God? What do you love more, the gifts of God or do you love God more? God wants to know that you love him the most. Next chapter, Sarah dies. Eliezer gets Rebecca. <laughs> then he weds Keturah, has extra sons. And then he dies. Hebron, 30 miles later. Hallelujah. What a life. What a life. And Brother Ram said, your life is in this journey. Justification, you got saved. Still made mistakes. Sanctification, still made mistakes. Got the seal of the Holy Ghost. You still make mistakes. But once the body changes, once the body change happens, no more mistakes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brother Ram said this, every time I go to feeling a little blue, every time I get a little depressed, I turn to Romans 4, 19. Let's go there. Get your Bible ready. Anybody ever get depressed in Laodicea? Is there an oppressive spirit in Laodicea? Yeah, you better believe it. It'll depress you, make you feel like I'm not even saved. Is there any hope for the rapture? Where's God? Where am I? Who am I? Am I even, what, what's, what's going on? How's there going to be a rapture? It's a depressive spirit. And Brother Ram said, every time that got on me, I would go to Romans 4, 19. Now we know. No, I'm sorry, wrong, wrong one. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. So he had to look at God's promise. Even though his body didn't look like it, his body wasn't obeying yet, he still had to confess God's promise, knowing that his body would obey the word of God. Verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith giving God glory. Can you put that timeline back up there? I showed you all those staggerings, right? All those red dots. This is what we see. We see stagger, stagger, stagger. Oh, stagger, stagger, stagger. When God looks down on it, he looks and says, Abraham's righteous. By faith, he's righteous. And Abraham didn't stagger not even one time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He can't, he can't, like Brother Ram said, you can't be a black and white bird. You can't be a drunk, a half, half sober, half drunk. You're either one or the other. In God's eyes, you're a justified, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, blood bought Christian, hallelujah. And there's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet by God's grace. I know I preached long and hard, but I hope it was a blessing by God's grace. Musicians can come. I think I heard Brother Cam read this recently. Brother Ram said, see, I hope that's the way my divine commentary will be rode up like Abraham's was. Amen. That I stagger not. He said, he said, there is not my mistakes and everything. In other words, I hope God doesn't record all my mistakes and everything, but just records what I tried to do. Amen. The intention of my heart to do for God's people. And I believe that's right. Because God didn't record, uh, in, in Romans 4, God didn't record all of Abraham's mistakes. God just looked at it as he never stopped. He never staggered. He never let the enemy get the best of him. He kept walking those miles. He kept going on the travels. He just kept on the journey until God brought every promise of God for his life to pass. Hallelujah. 
And we showed you many times he stopped there. I'll build an altar. I'll give God praise. Hallelujah. And that's what we're doing tonight. We're giving God some praise. Actually, I better pull up uh, one more. Let's play. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, something about faith. If you just play a song about faith, hallelujah, by God's grace. Colossians 1.22. I appreciate everybody's attention to the word of God. Pull on the word of God. This is how God sees you. You know, some people might wonder, well, I'm not Abraham, and how does this apply to me? But this applies to the church. How many are part of the church? You're part of the called out group? In the body of his flesh. That's why Good Friday is so beautiful. I love it every year. I love it. I go back and read what Brother Branham said about the blood of Jesus Christ. And how Brother Branham said, I have no merit to get me into heaven. He said, my merit of being a Pentecostal won't get me into heaven. He said, my only merit is the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only way I get into heaven. I love that. He said, I have so many sins hanging on me. I've got the quote. I have so many things against me hanging on me. I can never make it in on my own. But he died for me. <laughs> you mean two million souls won? You can't brag on that? No, because... Man can't give an increase. Only God can give an increase. What did it, Lord? You did it in the body of your flesh. Through death, Jesus Christ will present us holy. That means sacred. No blemish. Unblameable. There will be no accusers there. Like the woman caught in adultery. All the accusers left. Jesus said, where are your accusers? I have none, Lord. Then you're not condemned. There's no one here to accuse you. Satan will be cast out of heaven. All those demons will be cast out of heaven. There's no more accusers. Hallelujah. There's only a righteous judge saying, you're forgiven. You're justified. I declare you righteous. Hallelujah. Unreprovable. No one can rebuke you in God's sight. That's what I call love. That's what I call power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's bow our hearts tonight. Abraham Seed, let's bow our hearts to your friend. The Bible said Abraham believed in God and he was called the friend of God. Jesus said, I have called you servants, but now I'm calling you friends. For all the things I've heard of my father, I've made known unto you. Church, God gave us all the mysteries of God. He's made that known unto us. Revelation 10, 7. My goodness. He's finished the mystery of God. He's made known his secrets to us. You know, most churches think the U.S. is going to have a, a nationwide revival. Do you know that? Most churches believe that. They believe this eclipse coming is a sign of Nineveh. God's going to have mercy. What, what happened to Nineveh? They all repented. They actually believe that. But God didn't let you believe that. God shared his secrets with you because you wanted his secrets. That's how much God loves you. And Jesus said, I don't call you servants anymore. I call you my friends. Friends, God knows where you are in your journey. I trust the Holy Spirit said something tonight from Abraham's life that you can apply to yours. Turn the page. Move on. Hallelujah. I'm going to get you to believe it. If you don't believe it, I'm going to help you believe it. How many believe that by God's grace? Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for tonight, Lord. We appreciate, Lord, your Holy Spirit that we feel, Lord God. Without you, it wouldn't even be a meeting, Lord God. We sense your holy presence, dear God. We thank you for this word that we've heard tonight, Lord. Lord, may we be doers of this word, not hearers only, deceiving ourselves. That's what that message from Brother McBride did so much for me. I could go do what he said. And I had the grace to go do it.
Lord, thank you for making us your friends. Lord, I pray as we walk out of this place in a few minutes, may we recognize our journey is the same as Abraham's. You are going to help us believe. You are going to confirm your word to us. Hallelujah. Glory. You will never leave us nor forsake us. You might draw back for a season to show us that we need to be more humble like you did in my life. Like you did in Hezekiah's life. Where it wasn't as easy anymore to just have the anointing. Seemingly. But Lord, in each case, you showed Abraham grace. Called him your friend. And fulfilled your promises to him, Lord God. Help us, Lord, as we walk in the steps of our father Abraham. Help us to confess the promise of God. Help us to believe the promise of God. And Lord, especially, take away any doubt about the rapture. Lord, that's my prayer tonight, Lord God. Take away any doubt about the body change. May these words from Brother Branham, from the Bible, may they become such a reality to us, Lord God. Your face separates us from all unbelief. Hallelujah. God's word calls for total separation from unbelief, Lord God. I know you'll help us just like you helped Abraham and Sarah. So we thank you for that tonight, Lord. Bless this church. Bless each and every individual, God, as they long to serve you, long to love you. May they keep moving forward by the grace of God. In Jesus Christ's name. And the saints said... God bless you, Brother Cam can come. If anyone desires prayer, I'll be happy to pray with you tonight by God's grace. Hallelujah. Let's sing that by God's grace. There are two roads you may take, one by side and one by faith. Take the word of God. I believe. I just believe. You can fly. I believe. I believe. Struggle. Because it's by grace.
can fly in a higher place. Do not struggle. It's by grace that your wings to the winds of faith. Set your wings. Oh, set your wings. Seems I can hardly go, but still I see victory. And many times I'm walking by faith, I can't see what lies before me, but still I see victory. I have just got to tell you Satan you can't cross that bloodline because I'm covered by his blood you may snare and you may fight but you're gonna battle tonight remember can't cross that bloodline sometimes the battle gets hot and it seems that we're fighting a lot but I remember that I'm standing on the right Satan, if I were you, I'd turn around and I'd give up to you, because I know you're gonna lose. I've just gotta tell you, Satan, you can't cross that He has not let go. 
know and want. You have been predestinated to make this, amen? And remember, the thing that he was looking at was Abraham. He said, because he believed, it was imputed unto him as righteousness, amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. It ain't looking at yourself. It's looking at the blood, amen? It's looking at what he did, amen? And he took our place, amen? We have that revelation. But brother, sister, don't hold it off for another day. If you need the Holy Ghost, you need to get right with God. The time is ticking. The time is moving. And he's here to meet our needs. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll sing another song, brother, sister. But I trust you've been blessed. I trust you've been washed over. What a blessing of the Lord. Aren't you glad that you can say, I'm that one. Aren't you glad you can say, I'm Abraham's seed, amen? Brother, sister, it ain't time to give up. It's time to keep fighting, amen? amen. To keep moving, amen? amen? Hallelujah. He loved us this much. Amen. Just think about it. If you had a sin in your life when you come and heard this word, all you had to do was say, God, forgive me. Amen. And believe it. Come with a godly sorrow and lay it down and you will be what? Made clean by Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And there's plenty of grace for tomorrow. But I'll tell you what. I ain't pointing at you. I need it too. Every day. Amen. Brother Branham said many times a day we backslide. Every day we're going to do it. Aren't you glad he loves you that much? He knew it. <laughs> and he provided a path that, that he would not impute iniquity upon you. Amen. Oh, what a Savior we serve. He can't cross that bloodline, brother, Amen. sister. He can't get past it. <laughs> Remember, he can't cross that bloodline. Amen. I just got to tell you. And I've just got to tell you, Satan. Cross that bloodline. Oh, remember, you can't cross that bloodline. Please forgive me. I need your grace to make it through. All I have is you, and I'm at your mercy. Lord, I'll serve you until my dying day. Help others find the way. I'm at your mercy. Please forgive me.
name of Jesus Christ, may it be about this time, hallelujah, may the peace of God that passes all understanding, Lord God, may it comfort our dear sister, Lord God. Remember, Lord, your daughter, hallelujah, Abraham's daughter, as she's there at home. I will dwell in the shadow of your wings. I'll abide in your faithful covering. Night will fall, but I will not be afraid when I dwell in the shadow of your wings. In the shadow, in the shadow, in the shadow of your wings. In the shadow, in the shadow, in the shadow of your wings. Safety lies in the shadow of your wings. I rely on your faithful covering. Arrows fly, but I will shadow of your wings I will know of the peace your love can bring I will fall but I will not be afraid when I dwell in the shadow of your wings in the shadow in the shadow in the shadow safety lies in the shadow of your wings. I rely on your faithful covering. Arrows fly, but I will not be afraid when I dwell in the shadow time in the shadow in the shadow in the shadow in the shadow of your wings in the shadow in the shadow in the shadow of your wings of God cover me cover me Lord cover me you're my peace of God peace of God cover me oh through the storm Lord, cover me only in you. Oh, only in you I am saved. And only in you I'm secure. Only in you I find Cover me, cover me, cover me when I am hurting, cover me when I'm not strong, cover me when I 
storm. Cover me when all seems hopeless. Cover me when my faith is small. Let the peace that passes all I understand cover me, cover me, peace of God, peace of God, cover me, cover me, Lord, cover me. is all I understand. Cover me, cover me. Thank you, Lord. Praise your holy name. Worthy, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's sing that song, Through the Fire, Amen, How My Nose. He will go with you through that fire. He said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. So many times I've questioned certain circumstances and things I could not understand. And many times in trials Weakness blurs my vision And my frustrations get so out of hand Well, it's then I am reminded I've never been forsaken I've never had to stand one test alone Look at all the victories, God's Spirit rises up in me, and it's through the fire my weakness is made strong. Oh, He never promised that the cross would not get heavy. Hello. 
song promises one by one aren't you glad he's there for you always he promised to hold your hand all the way through amen just like he did abraham led him all the way through you may have to come back around but he still led him all the way through amen well he promised to hold my hand he promised to help me stand when the valley's too low and the river's too wide he promised he would lead me to the other side his promise is like my way, never let my feet to stray. Living in his word, I will overcome. Standing on his promises one by one. I may have to walk through the valley of death. Yes. And I may not be sure. is light my way never let my feet to stray living in his word i will overcome standing on his promises one by one i may have to walk on the water with him yes but i don't have to Living in his word, I will overcome. Standing on his promises one by one. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's sing one more song, amen, as we're dismissed. Let's sing that song. My theophany, I hear it calling me, amen. How many can hear it calling you, amen? Amen. Day by day, all the way. One day I'm gonna take a step towards my theophany. One day I'm gonna take another step into my theophany. One day I'm going the final step, and it's going to set me free. Yeah. 
sing a little song, Have Faith in God. Amen. As we go, amen, have faith. Oh, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Oh, have faith in God. God for